I literally spent years watching mixed media and art journaling tutorials feeling quite intrigued but also somewhat intimidated. Until I realized that as a card maker I already knew so many techniques that I could use. And so do you. As an example, I'm going to show you how I created this art journal page and that, after all, this is not that different from creating a card. The steps are the same. Base, background, focal point, sentiment or quote, and finishing touches. I started from a 5 by 7 inches panel that I die cut with a die by waffle flower. I like to use this die because it already adds holes and I can then use this page on my disc bound art journal, but you could also trim your panel and use a punch to create the holes instead. And yes, the size is a little bit larger than the A2 size we are used to, but I think it's still quite a manageable space for someone used to making cards. For the background, I am basically working in two steps adding color and then adding texture. To add some quick color to the page, I'm using Distress Sprays in the color Salvaged Patina and Peacock Feathers. To make the pigment smooth, I spritz the background with some water and then for a little bit of a pearlescent effect, I added some Nuvo Shimmer powders. Nothing too different from a quick watercolor background for a card. When it comes to texture, I like to add visual texture using techniques like stamping, for example, and I also like to add some tactile texture, I would say, using some heavier media like texture pastes. For this page, I created a custom stamp using the Simon Hurley stamping foam and my chamois holder. I inked the foam up with some distress ink in salvaged patina and then I stamped it on my background. I used a paintbrush to remove any harsh lines that had formed on the edges of the foam and then I added some splatters, cause everything's better with splatters. I really love the look they create and I use them on my cards all the time. I waited for the droplets to dry and then I sealed the page with matte gel medium. And really, this is the only step so far that I wouldn't normally use on a card. But somehow I find this process so much more freeing than card making. My art journal is something I do for myself. It's a way to put my emotions onto paper and it's really just such a wonderful feeling. You should really give it a go if you haven't already. Back to the background, you could totally stop here, but I decided to add a couple of extra steps. For that tactile texture, I randomly and pretty haphazardly brayered some gesso here on the background. This is not something that I would normally do on a card, but really it doesn't take any skill, I'm doing it totally randomly. Another technique that I really love to use on my cards and that works great for mixed media too is stenciling. Here I'm using white texture paste, but you can use any paste you have at hand. To finish off the background, I added a bit of shading on the edges with my Faber-Castell pit pen, which I can blend with my fingers at this point because the matte medium created a sleek surface. I added some more stamping for added visual texture, and then of course I added more splatters. You know why, right? For my focal point, I used the stamp by Colorado Craft Company with this big happy rainbow and I stamped it with Distress Oxides, in rainbow colors obviously. And there are many card making stamps that you can use on your art journals and mixed media projects, so you really can stick to your style and use what you have. For my clouds, I used tumbled glass distress oxide and then I stamped some white pigment ink on top to make them a little bit lighter and then I sealed the images first with some distress microglaze and then with some gel medium on top. I used the microglaze first, otherwise the gel medium would have smeared my distress oxides like you can see on this poor rainbow that I sacrificed to show you. But using the microglaze first ensures that everything is safe and I can then adhere the rainbow to my background. For my sentiment or quote, I was clearly inspired by the stamp that I used today. I wanted some positive words so that I can look back at this art journal page and feel uplifted if I need to, and even more so because I am the one who created it. 
I really love adding finishing touches to my cards to take them up a notch and I like to do the same with my art journal pages. I included the stamped hearts here in the same way in which I would include sequins to fill up the space and balance the design. White highlights are a great way to bring your projects to life and to make everything stand out a bit more. I added some shading with my Faber-Castell pit pen. And by the way, do you remember the stamping foam that I used for this art journal page? I have a video right here with plenty of examples on how you can use it to pretty much double your craft room's worth. 